Today on Home Built Workshop, we're building a shooting board. This is an essential jig that's gonna help you out in your workshop, even if you don't build guitars. Stick around. Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Homeboat Workshop. I hope you are all doing amazing. Yes, today we're going to make a shooting board to use for jointing edges, specifically in my case, for the top and the back of an acoustic guitar. Now a shooting board can be used for a lot of other things around the shop. Instead of just jointing parts for an acoustic guitar, you can use it to put a nice 90 degree edge on just about any piece of wood that will fit on your board. It's not hard to make, doesn't take a whole lot of time. So let's jump right in and I'll show you what I'm gonna build this with. I've got an off cut here of three quarter inch Baltic birch plywood. I think I can build about the entire shooting board from this. We just need to make one cut down the center to make both of our pieces that'll become the shooting board. Beautiful. The base on my shooting board I'm making 14 inches wide. The top panel is 10 inches wide. <laughs> there, shooting board complete. <laughs> Now when I say shooting board complete, yes, I am joking a little bit, but not much. In reality, all we really need in a shooting board is a straight edge to guide our plane along the edge. We need a fence at the end and it could be done. It just needs to hold that plane so you can square up your piece. Now I want to go just a little bit further than that. I want to have a fence at the end, but I want to have the option as well to change that up down the road. If I need maybe a 45 degree fence or something different, I want to be able to modify and adapt this later on. Instead of just attaching a 90 degree fence down here, I want to have the ability to swap that out. So I want to create a small rabbit in here that will allow me to insert a block of wood that could be the fence, or maybe I attach it to some angled piece for 45 degree miters. Whatever it is I decide I want to do, I want to be able to make it fit in that rabbit so that this is more versatile than just shooting 90 degree angles. Also, when you're putting together your shooting board, pay attention to which hand you are. Now, mine's gonna probably look backwards to you because I'm a lefty and I'm going to use my hand plane with the left, so I will be having the ledge of mine on the left. If you're right-handed and you typically use a hand plane with your right hand, you're probably gonna want the ledge on the right-hand side, so just keep that in mind. But let's cut a rabbit. Not a real rabbit, but r rabbit. R you know what I mean. <laughs> Now I plan to cut this rabbit using an edge guide on my router, so I wanna make sure that this is exactly 90 degrees. If it's not, we're gonna risk having our fence off to this face, and that would be bad. That would kinda of defeat the purpose. And that is perfect. That's the main reason I decided to use the factory edge because, well, hopefully it's nice and square, and this one is. I'm using a 3 8 inch straight cutting bit to make this cut. I'm gonna make multiple passes until I get to the depth that I need, and then I'll nudge the edge guide over until I get to my half inch width. With our half inch rabbit cut in there, now we can move on to the assembly and really this couldn't be much simpler. First I'll lay out the locations where I'm going to drill some pilot holes for some screws. While I'm applying the glue, I am going to be very careful not to get too much near the edge where the hand plane is going to ride. I want to try to avoid as much squeeze out there as possible. If I do get squeeze out there and I don't clean it up in time, having any glue in that area could affect the angle that the hand plane touches the wood. One of these days I'm going to press my luck doing that and that little cardboard cover is going to come off and <laughs> get right in there. Don't be afraid, it's only glue. Now we'll just put the screws to it. 
I want to make sure that the screw does not sit proud of the surface. Whoa, hang on. Here. While I wait for this glue to dry, I need to install a cleat on the back. It's really just going to be a bench hook. It'll hook on the side of the bench or I could clamp it in the vise. Really just to hold everything in place while you're putting forward pressure on it. It's just going to keep the jig from sliding away from you. This is really nothing more than a block of wood. I'm just going to screw it in place. I'm going to put mine about five inches from the end. A lot of people will make a shorter shooting board and they'll put it right at the end of the piece. Wherever it works for you is just fine. I decided to pull it in about five inches just to keep it more towards me so I don't have to reach so far if I'm working on a smaller piece. If you'd rather glue the cleat in place, you absolutely can. The reason I decided to just screw it on is really just so I can move it easily if I find out that this location is not the best. If I need to move it forward or back, it's going to be really easy to do. Now I don't know about you guys, but if you've ever had a plywood splinter, it does not feel good. So I'm gonna sand all the edges lightly just to make sure that there's no splinters, no sharp edges, or anything I can, well, splinter myself on. Yay, sanding. Now we're ready to install our fence, but before I just tap this into place, I'm gonna put a tiny chamfer on the bottom edge. That's gonna make it a little bit easier to knock it into place. Tiny, tiny shaving. I'm gonna double check that fence with a machinist square just to make sure we're good. And that is, that's pretty square. We'll check it the other way. I'm happy with that. That's going to work well. There's one more thing that I want to do. I'm going to add a toggle clamp at the end to help hold some pieces in place. So I need to mark out the screw locations, drill the screw holes, and then I can attach the toggle clamp. Now some of you may notice right away that that's not the typical pad that you find on a toggle clamp. Usually it's some kind of a black rubber piece or something like that. And you would be absolutely correct. This is a 3D printed piece that I made that friction fits on the bolt head of a bolt. This is just a half inch head bolt. It just friction fits on there and I've glued on a piece of leather. The idea is to help disperse some of the pressure so that I don't damage the soft woods that are typically used for the soundboard on an acoustic guitar. If you guys are interested at all in maybe trying out this pad for some sort of project that you have, just fits on a bolt, I'm gonna make the STL files available to all of you for free. Link down below in the description. You can download it over on my website, homebuiltworkshop.com. Now, I guess, we just need to try this thing out. We're going to slide our board into place, making sure that the cleat hooks on the edge of the table. And I'm cramped. I have no room. Found a piece of thinner stock here. We'll just use that as a test. Let's start by squaring up the edge. We'll grab our trusty number five. I've got the blade set so that it may not even make a cut yet. We'll adjust that in tiny, tiny increments until we just can take a fine shaving off of there. So there's nothing. And there's just a tiny little bit, I heard it. We're gonna go with that. We're getting just a fine dust right now. There we go. That's a 
a nice little shaving. Really thin, turns to dust if you crumble it. And our edge is nice and smooth. Now let's see if we can square it up with one of these sides. By looking at the shavings, it looks like my plane's cutting pretty even across the width. Let's see if we're square. That looks about as square as anything I could ever cut. I have a light right over here to the side and I'm kind of holding the piece towards that light trying to see if there's any light coming through there. This thing's square. This is as square, if not squarer, than I can get on my table saw sled. It's dead on. And with that, I'm not ready to put this shooting board to use for the next steps of my acoustic guitar build. But what if you're sitting there watching this video saying, dude, I don't build guitars. Why do I need to build that? Well, a lot of people will make these shorter that can be used for more common woodworking tasks. This could do the same thing, squaring up stock for boxes and different projects and things. You don't need to make it near as long, but I hope you can see where a jig like this would come in handy for all kinds of woodworking projects, not just building guitars. I want to mention too that by having this removable fence here, I can now make any sort of different attachments that can just pop into that slot as long as I make it fit this fence, or I guess I could even make it fit over the fence and utilize this existing one. You could make 45 degree fences with the slot in there, just pop it into place for doing miters, all kinds of different options. If you just get creative, there's a ton of different options, different fixtures you could come up with to utilize this kind of a jig. Thanks a lot for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope you go build yourself a shooting board. No matter your woodworking style, this thing can come in super handy. Thanks a lot for watching. We'll see you next time. Why do you always have to do that every time you put something in the drill? Am I the only one? Surely that can't be the case. <laughs>